Welcome back to another video. I hope you're enjoying the uh, series so far of the Mitsubishi Evo 5 project. Now, if you haven't seen the last video, we installed this crankshaft. We've done all the measurements, installed all the bearings, and got this thing spinning absolutely perfectly. So if you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. You can see we've got ARP mains. Brand new crank in there, 4G64 stroker crank in there now. So what we're gonna turn our attention to are these pistons. We're gonna gap all the rings. We're gonna make sure all the bearing clearances for the rods are all good. So that's what we're getting onto now. So let's just quickly run through what type of piston rings that you've got attached to your piston. So you've got four types of rings, you can see. This is the expander ring. This is the ring that sits in between the two oil control rings. This is the secondary compression ring, but you can see it's the thickest ring of the lot because it also acts as an oil scraper ring. So as well as sealing compression in the bore, it also scrapes down the oil, any excess oil that's got past these oil rings. And you can see here, this is the top compression ring. So this is one of the main rings that takes all the battery in from the cylinder pressures. First off, I'm gonna start with gapping the rings. So the importance of ring gapping is massive. So what will happen is if you have the ring gap, say you have the ring gap where it is now, way too big, you're gonna get blow by of compression. It's gonna be a lot of compression going out into the crankcase. Um, and the engine's not gonna have compression, not run properly. The problem is if you have this gap like this too tight, say you set it like that, and then the piston expands inside the bore. This piston ring will touch, you can see like that, and it will push itself out into the bore like so, and that will scratch all up the bore and also seize up the piston. There'll be a lot of heat, a lot of metal, and the piston will actually seize inside the bore. So it's a fine art between having a too big a gap and too large a gap, but there's calculations that I'll tell you about that you can do for that. And also, these top two compression rings have to have different gaps, and that's to stop ring flutter. So I'm gonna show you what that means and what we have to do for that. So you can see here that I've just popped the piston ring in and I pushed it in slightly with the piston as you see in the last episode. Just going through with a feeler gauge now. I've already set this one up. I'm just showing you as an example. And then uh, I'm gonna show you the calculations needed to do before you can set the ring gap. So when it comes to piston ring gapping, the uh, calculations get a little bit more complicated. You can see here, the uh, bore of the engine is 85.5 mil um, because it's got an overbore of 5.5 of a millimeter. You first off have to convert that back into inches. So you divide that by 25.4 and that gets you 3.366. So then you go over to your ring end gap chart and then you pick out which one you've got. So there's about six different types. Um, you can see the drag racing, road racing, nitrous supercharged, turbocharged, high street. You've got to pick what spec and what you're going to be doing because obviously the more heat you're going to be putting into the pistons, the bigger the gap has to be. So once I've worked out the calculations, it goes from 0.0168 of an inch, then you convert that back to millimeters and uh, it's 0 0.42 millimeter. I'm gonna go with 0 0.45 millimeter. So that's the feeler gauge size that I'm gonna use. And then once you've gapped the top ring, you've got to gap the second ring. And the second ring to stop um, ring flutter, which is a compression build up between the rings, is uh, you've got to have that you can see here 0 0.04 to 0 0.08 of an inch bigger than that to let the pressure out. So it's a little bit of complication. So if you're good at maths, this is no problem for you. So now I'm getting to gap in the secondary ring. You can see I've put loads of oil in the bore as well so that we don't get any sort of damage. And as I said to you in the last video, you just use your piston to slowly push down your rings till you get it to a certain point. You can see there, so it's nicely down in the bore and it will be nice and straight. And then you just get your feeler gauge and I've just, uh, this ain't the right one, but because I'm doing it for a camera, and then you just get the feeler gauge inside your gap, and then you measure your ring gap. So that's the secondary ring done now, so we can move on to the next four, get them done, and then attach them to the pistons. Now you've gapped all your piston rings, it's time to fit the piston rings to the piston. So start off with your expander ring first. But firstly, get some oil. I always start with 30 weight oil, and just make sure you coat all the rings, all the ring gaps. These are called your ring lands. These are what crack on non-forged pistons. Coat up your skirts and the whole lot. Also coat up your uh, piston rings before you put them in. So expand the ring first, as I said. And then you start with your oil rings. These are your lower oil rings. These can go on either way, they're universal. So that bottom one's on there. And we're gonna do the top one. Next, we're gonna move on to the secondary compression ring. Now, as I said to you in the past, always make sure the right end for the rings is on the top. So that way you know that that's the top of the ring. So be careful with these secondary rings because they are quite brittle as opposed to the top compression ring. 
So once they're actually in, you should be able to spin them freely, lovely and freely like that, no stickiness, no notchiness. If you're getting them sticky, even when you've compressed them, it's because the inside of the ring gap needs to be deburred. So now for the top ring, same again, oil it up, make sure it's nicely oiled. So there is a technique to do this, so you make sure that you don't scratch up the piston skirt or the piston wall. You've got to make sure you hold it away from the wall. You can see it just slots in nicely like that. And that's your piston rings installed. So for future reference now, you can see I've scribed in number four into the rod and I've done the same with all the rest of the rods, just so we know what order they're in, because obviously if we were using these rods, I want to make sure they're in the right order. And you see there, that's just slid in with my fingers. No need for any sort of mechanical assistance. And now you can just put the circle clip in there and that finishes it off. So you join me hours later between uh, measuring and measuring and more measuring. So you can see I've matched up the shells now for the big end rod bearings. So we've got perfect clearances across all four now, identical. It took me a long while to match them shells up to get them perfectly, but we've got it now. So I'm very happy with how they've come out. So now it's time to install them into the rods and uh, get these pistons and rods into this engine. So the engine's fully prepped up now. I've just oiled up all the bores. I'm going to oil them up again fully before I... Uh, Install the pistons, you can see the blocks all decked. So get these pistons and rods back in now.
So there we have it. That's one fully built up short block for the 2.37 litre stroker engine. Um, in the next episode, we're going to be concentrating on this head. Um, I was going to do this head in this episode as well, but I just didn't get around to doing it in time. Um, and I thought I'd get up a quick video for you guys to watch over a Sunday, over the weekend, and I'll get this one up in the week. So you can see here, I've just started writing out a build sheet for the car. Uh, I'll print this up all properly afterwards. I'll just write down all the specs and everything while I'm doing it. Then I'll print this up. So every engine I ever do, I know exactly what I've built, what I've done the clearances to, all the bearing part numbers, everything's written down. So I know exactly what's gone into my engines. So you can see on the head, this uh, face has been decked very, very recently. So I'm not gonna deck this block again. You can see it's had quite a lot of skims in the past. So. Um, when I'm coming to rebuild this, it's not going to be decked again. It's perfectly flat. So we all love a freshly built bottom end. Now I just want to say how nice this is spinning. I mean, you can see I'm hardly putting any tension and it's moving four pistons, a whole crank and rods. So that's how it really should be spinning. There's no notchiness, nothing. So it's going to turn over lovely. Going to make a nice free high power engine. It's well worth specking all the clearances, getting everything perfect. I was really happy with how they all come out. Absolutely spot on. As you see, I turned the crank by hand in the last episode. I'm just getting to protecting the uh, head up at the minute from any scratches or marks. You don't want to damage any of the head face because obviously the head gasket's got a seal properly on there. So I'm just protecting that up at the minute so I can get the valves out and clean all the chambers out. Whenever you clean these chambers out, make sure you use a brass wire wheel and not a steel one because you'll just tear the aluminium to pieces. So I'm just quickly cleaning up these head studs ready to get them refitted. You can see we're using the Cosworth H11 head studs. These are probably the strongest head studs that you can get on the stock thread for these blocks. Um, they're a bit stronger than the ARPs. So there we have it, the H11 head studs are all installed. I've just oiled up all the bores so that we don't get no surface rust. So I can wrap this engine up now, uh, make sure we get no dirt and grime into it. Um, because I ain't got the sump or nothing on at the minute because the oil pump's not on. So I've got to work out head gasket thickness. Um, in order to do that, I've just got to do some calculations with the CC of the head and obviously the CC of the pistons and whatever compression ratio. So do some calculations, I'll order a head gasket. 